Америка с нами! Сами блядь! Советский флаг! Вы стрелять будете? Я скажу, пожалуйста, командир. Переговоры будут, не вопрос. Да, переговоры будут. Остановите толпу и пускай ведут все стоять на месте. Вы специально провоцируете. Мы провоцируем. Мы без оружия. Какая провокация? Я говорю, стой! Я выполняю свой приказ. Я серьезно говорю, по ногам будут стрелять. We're joined now by uh, Julia Yaffe, the senior editor for the New Republic, along with our chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo. Julia, you speak Russian, so you understood that exchange. It was very tense, very dramatic. Are we exaggerating? Uh, exaggerating what? The intensity of what's going no, on. No, I mean, he's threatening to shoot uh, people in the legs. And also what's curious is, is he's saying, I'm following orders. Who is he taking orders from? Are these more of the unmarked gunmen we see, you know, strutting around Crimea? Are they, who do they answer to? Who do they get their this orders from? This could have from? ended differently. Uh, fortunately, no one was injured, but look at the intensity of their faces, what they're saying. There, there could have been some blood. Um, I, I don't know. Y you often encounter this kind of, uh, this kind of person, be it a cop or a special forces uh, operative. For example, at protests in Moscow, they might not have guns on them, but they can be really intense and... They might not actually want to spill blood, but they're they're scary. Jim, show us where, where we're, we're, we're talking right now in this region of Crimea. We've highlighted the area. It's sovereign part of Ukraine, uh, although some Russians probably would not like it to be a sovereign part of Ukraine. But right. this is a, a key military strategic area for the Russians. Right here, this is Sevastopol, headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet, Russia's only warm weather water port. We've talked about that. The other one's way up here where they're not going to necessarily have access during winter and gives them access from the Black Sea, connected to the Mediterranean, connected to the Atlantic. Uh, that's essential. And this is, you know, th this seems to be Putin's endgame here, to establish and demonstrate and send a message about his interest uh, in this area um, and his, his control, his continued control over it. And you see, you know, you, you can argue that he's already reached that goal, right, regardless of what happens next. He's, he's made it clear, you know, it, things went too far with his government. He wasn't comfortable with the government, doesn't think it's representative, and he sent his message. You, you wrote a piece today, and I read it, very powerful. You basically suggest Putin has, in your words, lost it. Explain. So, uh, actually, there was a piece in the New York Times on Sunday where Peter Baker reported on a conversation that Angela Merkel had with Barack Obama in which she said she tried to talk some sense into Vladimir Putin but said that his touch, uh, that he was not, no longer in touch with reality and that he was in another world, as she said. And today's press conference really proved it. I mean, he has started to believe his own propaganda. And some of those things he's saying are, are truly dangerous, right? I mean, in the press conference today, he's talking about fascists and anti-Semites among, uh, um, among the protesters, not just among them, but in fact leading them. Uh, and, and this is the kind of thing. You have such a volatile mix of emotions and history in, in all of these places here. And now you've got guys with guns, right? And you, you see that confrontation today. And he says he's following orders, but, but he's far away from, from headquarters there. And all it takes is one bad decision, and the thing could spiral out of control. He may be delusional, maybe out of control. Living, lost it, living in another world. But he got what he wanted, which is basically Crimea for all practical purposes. Without a lot of blood, if any blood being shed in Crimea, he's in control. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. He, it's, this was not a problem before. The Russian Black Sea Fleet was based there, no problem. Uh, he, he always managed to find a way to build good relations with whoever was in power in Kiev, with Yanukovych, with Tymoshenko. He was fine. I think it was just that the, when the opportunity presented itself, uh, that he went ahead and, and took it because, you know, it's better not to be dependent on another country to base your fleet in. Could I ask you a question? Because one thing we've talked a lot about is how does the U.S., how does the West demonstrate its commitment to its NATO allies, you know, the ones here all along the western border, Poland, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, and then you have the Baltic, sta Baltic stakes up there. If the U.S. were to send a military signal and say, hold exercises, right? Russia's holding exercises over there, just off the eastern border. Hold some exercises here with Polish forces. How would Moscow react to that? I think they might blow a gasket. Yeah. I don't know what that would look like, but, I mean, look at how they're reacting at the, the mere mention of just economic sanctions by the U.S. The U.S. isn't even a big trading partner for Russia. It does far more business with uh, Europe. Uh, the Russian elite have all their money and real estate in Europe, not in the U.S. And yet the mere mention of the U.S. imposing economic sanctions is driving them crazy. Yeah. I mean, you have people at the highest levels of the foreign ministry, of the Kremlin, of the I, government, I, just... Because I've been told that what Putin cares about the most is money. 
He's got a lot of money. He's got billions of. I he's, don't agree. He's, a, he's, a, he's a Russian nationalist, but if he sees that fortune that he and his buddies have collected going down the drain with the value of Russian currency collapsing, with the markets collapsing, uh, that could have an impact on him. I actually don't agree. I think the economic arguments have been the least powerful. We saw this, for example, when he invaded neighboring Georgia. Uh, people said, you know what, this is going to uh, be a big hit on the Russian stock market, on Russian companies, on the ruble. Didn't matter. The He's, Russian, the he Russian cares about his proof. place in they, history. They made a nice comeback today after a dramatic fall yesterday. No, but he cares mo most about his place in history. And yep. if he's seen as restoring uh, a bigger Russia, a uh, Russia with bigger territory, reuniting ethnic Russians, Orthodox Christians, right. I think that's more important to him than the money.